Now, we've about now 3,500 troops redeployed in Afghanistan as of tonight. Hundreds of thousands of people are trying to get out. China is poised to exploit the situation. The U.S. border under siege with COVID-infected migrants. And we don't have an actual president in charge. Yesterday, Joe Biden darted back to D.C. from Camp David, read for about, what, 19 minutes? then took no questions and skedaddled off uh, the podium. Oh, and then he went back to Camp David. Now, answers were supposed to be provided today by Biden's national security advisor, a young chap who looks like he's running for student council. But I sure as hell wouldn't vote for him after this performance. When a civil war comes to an end with an opposing force marching on the Capitol, there are going to be scenes of chaos. There are going to be lots of people leaving the country. That is not something that can be uh, fundamentally avoided. Translation, happens. And what about getting all those Americans out of Afghanistan? I'm not going to comment on hypotheticals. What I'm going to do is stay focused on the task at hand, which is getting as many people out as rapidly as possible, and we will take that day by day. We have asked them all to come to the airport to get on flights and take them home. That's what we intend to do. We intend to do. Get to the airport. Don't worry about those Taliban people attacking everyone on the way. Well, a few hours ago, Sullivan, kind of the Doogie Hauser of the diplomatic national security set, he tried to clarify in a tweet claiming that what he meant to say was that they intend and they will get all Americans who want to leave out of Afghanistan. Uh, OK. Uh, maybe lead with that next time around. Well, that wasn't the only shocking revelation today. Apparently, our most experienced foreign policy president ever was so busy trying, out, trying to figure out how to use those TV remotes at Camp David that he had not spoken to another world leader during the crisis that he helped create. He has not uh, yet spoken with any other world leaders. Uh, myself, Secretary Blinken, uh, several other senior members of the team have been engaged on a regular basis with foreign counterparts, and we intend to do so in the coming days. He's in charge, in other words. Now, after feeling the blowback, for obvious reasons, the White House scrambled to put out word that Biden had finally picked up the phone to talk with, with uh, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. In other words, they had to do cleanup for the guy who was supposed to do cleanup for the president. These people are totally incompetent. Now, remember, this is our national security team. And wasn't foreign policy kind of Biden's thing? This is a moment that requires strong, steady, stable leadership. We need someone tested and trusted around the world. This is a moment for Joe Biden, a president with the experience to lead. I've worked on these issues as long as anyone. I've been throughout Afghanistan during this war, while the war was going on, from Kabul to Kandahar to the Kunar Valley. I've traveled there on four different occasions, I met with the people. I spoken to the leaders. Kabul, Kandahar. <laughs> oh, nice. That's good. Now, he was still under the delusion that Afghanistan was a stable country. Joe has been sleepy a lot longer than we thought. I thought America was back. Didn't he say that? I thought Biden and his team were foreign policy gurus who could totally get other countries to help the United States. I thought they had a plan. Experience is key, they said. Biden would calm things down after Trump and get us back to the regular order of things. Joe Biden brought with him uh, to the White House his expertise on foreign policy and national security. Joe Biden comes in with literally a world of experience. It's the entire cast of national security people who were on that stage yesterday with the president-elect, Joe Biden. It's competence, experience, insight, humility. They said that Trump had to be defeated because he was too green, too arrogant, a little brash. He made things more dangerous, they said. Foreign leaders didn't listen to him, they said. But all of it was a lie. We've just suffered one of the most humiliating defeats in American history 
a defeat made worse by their utter inability to predict anything with accuracy. And their response is that Biden isn't talking to anyone? Shouldn't Biden be talking to everyone and trying to assure them that he actually knows what he's doing? Even if the Biden team doesn't think he can do the job, shouldn't they at least pretend that he can do it? They could have given him some flashcards or something to read on the phone, anything. But no, we just had radio silence. The team of Blinken, Sullivan, and Klain has f plainly failed. The notion that they could run the country while Biden hid from public view has been proven false. On the military front, General White Rage Milley, Secretary CRT Austin, should have already been terminated. They're being outmaneuvered everywhere in the world, and it shows. Democrats and Republicans on the Hill should all be demanding that Biden clean house and bring in much better people to get this situation under control. We can't take these three uh, th uh, much longer. We can't take three weeks of this, much less three more years of this. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.